excited are you to be here at DPW? I am super excited. This is my first time and I am absolutely blown away. It's uh, been a great start, I guess, half halfway through yeah. today. Yeah, and I'm excited to have you here in our studio. Now tell everybody who you are and what you do. So my name is Louise jacobson Plute, and I'm the Chief Procurement Officer for uh, the BP Group. So mm -hmm. we've got quite the strategy as we transition from an integrated oil company to an integrated energy company. So pretty excited to be part of the procurement family. Yeah, lots of changes that you're making, and I think you're really passionate about change, changes within an organization, right? Leading the charge, leading the change, the impact that you can make, not only on your teams internally, but I think around modern procurement. Talk to me a little bit about that, because that sounds so exciting. <laughs> I, I love the term modern procurement, actually, mm -hmm. and I guess before I go into it, I'll, let me give a little bit about procurement at BP. So. Okay. We manage roughly $32 billion worth of spend across 39,000 suppliers. Wow. It's a huge range of activity, everything from large capital installations to goods for sale within our, our retail sites to our growth engines, which are on the journey um, to bring renewables and low carbon energy solutions to the world. So mm -hmm. it's quite vast and we have to innovate and we have to change in order to be yeah. successful. So we're really looking for ways as an organization to bring digital into that focus of innovation, where we can really increase operational efficiency, yeah. um, empower our workforce, people are really excited about it, and also really engage with our customers. And all of this holds true for procurement, that modern procurement. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the key areas that I'm really passionate about is working on our foundation. You've got to have that stable foundation first. Yeah. So we are bringing together our core set of applications to build that sturdy foundation. And then we're looking for these niche apps that can come in and supplement where we need to solve those business problems. And so they will interface with our foundation and I think build this single digital operating system, which I think is core to um, modern procurement. Well, with all those moving pieces, I mean, I couldn't imagine being able to do that necessarily without technology. And you've got to be able to partner with people who can scale with you and grow. I mean, there's so many moving pieces. Talk to us about how that journey has been to really take a look at the processes and did you, like where did you kind of start and sort of go, because you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Right? Well, I think it's, I mean, I, I started the journey about a year and a half ago, but of course the organization has been on the journey for some time. And I think even earlier today, some of the speakers were talking about digital transformation. It really is a, it's trans a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. <laughs> so I'm not sure where you start or if you ever finish, but it's a journey. <laughs> I would say one of the things that we've introduced uh, recently is uh, the concept of a, a procurement digital garage. So it's a small, mm -hmm dedicated team that works alongside our markets um, insights, our analytical team to really harness what are the problems that we face across the organizations. Okay. And that could be problems within the procurement practitioners, pain right. points they have, mm -hmm. and it also is those problems that we're supporting the business with solving. And so this digital garage, they come in, they work in six to eight week sprints, we bring wow. in technology, we test the hypotheses or those business problems against that technology. Mm -hmm. And then there's really two outcomes we're looking for. One is a, a fail safely fast, I say, because we do manage a lot of risk, so we've yeah. got to keep that in mind. Um, yeah. So fail fast, but safely, and learn from that. Mm -hmm. And then the second key thing is, well, if we see those signals of it being successful, we're able to then to start underpin a credible investment case hmm. and really then work on our, our scale up. So an example that we're working on right now, which is, I think, um, something that I've heard quite a bit the half day I've been here so far is sustainability. So. Mm -hmm. How are you working to embed sustainability within your supply chain? So yeah. we've given that problem to our digital garage, and they are really working to explore what technology is out there. How can we really get transparent um, and raise our sustainability awareness? What are our suppliers? Um, how sustainable are they? Mm -hmm. And so they're working in um, a very focused set of problem and then you know from there we'll be able to decide which direction we go but I think the key there is to stay focused and make sure that we're not doing something that perhaps we could 
use some of our existing tools to solve. Right. So they're really bringing in that, that focus. And that's really smart. I love that you call it the garage because what do you do when you go to the garage, right? You take your car in. Right. To... Tinker with things. Right. And, you yeah. tinker with things and you use different tools. And I think this is really exciting for technology that is out there for procurement because what you're doing is you're bringing that innovation in and you are testing to see which one is going to work for you. And not it's not all size fits exactly. all, right? Yeah. So you do have to do that testing, but you're focusing six to eight weeks. So it's yeah. not like it's going on for six months, 12 months, and then you're making a decision. It's very much decisive and in intentional and very mindful. Yes, absolutely. And I think one of the, we're a big company, so our, our systems are complex. When you interface with our core systems, it's not an easy thing to do. So yeah. before you make that investment, we're really keen to, well, let's experiment in a smaller, safer space. Yeah. And really, as I said, look for those signals that are really going to see, yes, this will work in mm -hmm. this category or this part of the business. And then bring in um, the bigger, bigger brain, so to speak, to see how we can interface and scale up across various points yeah. within BP. Well, because you, you have to know the impact on the rest of the organization, right? Sometimes Absolutely. we bring in a technology and then as we implement it, it doesn't necessarily work well with some of the other platforms that the rest of the organization is using. So I definitely think that's smart. And I think in that garage, you're also able to really have those conversations where, is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? Yeah. You know, and sit uncomfortably Yes. To get through those conversations. Yeah. It was something I was talking to Matthias a little bit earlier. So how do you see the digital landscape for procurement really shaping up? Is this garage going to take hold and we're going to see this sort of over across uh, all sorts of organizations? Well, I, I mean, I think I, I, the digital garage is, is something new for BP, but of course I've met other colleagues um, outside of BP have that have used it. this. <laughs> yes. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm all for test or taking what someone has already tested and bringing it in. So I think it's it's a good start for us. Um, I think that you look at just the procurement tech world and how dynamic and how fast paced it is. I think the digital garage is a tool right now that works really well, mm -hmm. especially given the business problems. I mean, the dynamics of the world, we have to be agile. We have to be able to mm -hmm. um, really react. And so we'll see how, how this goes, but we're super excited. We've, we've had a, a couple of sprints already. And um, yeah, this being here is part of what other tools could we test? We've got Absolutely. no shortage of business problems mm -hmm. to uh, present. So uh, give us a little bit of insight as to how this all works for you, like the testing, what works, and what is just hype. Can you give us a little sneak peek in how you actually make that happen? And to be honest with you, six to eight weeks really isn't that long of a period of time. You're absolutely right. And I think it's six to eight weeks experiments. So there could be several experiments that make up a larger sort of test, if you like. Okay. Um, and so that is, you know, but that's, I would, I would say it's more about here's an experiment. Here's what we, you know, just if you were a scientist, here's what we expect to see. If we don't see it, is that something that we should go on to the next? Or is that okay. a signal that we should actually fail fast? And so it's, it is a very iterative, dynamic process. And mm -hmm. I think so then, is it hype or how do you take it forward? Well, I think once we start to see um, some technologies come through this, then we, of course, like I think many other companies have governance um, mm -hmm. board structures that you then present your case for, here's an opportunity, here's the value it's gonna drive, and then you know you take it forward through, through there. And we've got that in place today, and we have been operating like that for a couple of years, but I think this opportunity here is to really, we've got, um, I was listening to the gentleman ahead of, ahead of myself, and you know the sustainability, the regulation, everything that's coming down, and I think this is a way that we'll be able to really test things and um, move forward, hopefully, in a direction that helps us um, really deliver that value to, yeah. to, to our uh, business partners. I'm excited to see how this garage works out and whether it get, takes hold in the industry to see if others are going to do that. So what do you think are the key opportunities for AI within procurement? I mean, AI is this hot topic. I kind of feel like it's like AI, AI, AI. You know, like everybody's talking about it. So what do you think? 
I mean, AI is definitely a, a, a buzzword right now. And I mean, but there's some truth to it, right? It's not there something is, that yeah. just showed up yesterday. And I think there's probably a lot of people here today in Amsterdam um, at the conference that know a heck of a lot more about AI than I do. But I do see there being lots of potential. I, I look at what my team, um, you know, day in, day out, what a procurement practitioner does. And a lot of it is very tactical, um, transactional sort of activity right. that if you had the data in the right place and you had the right um, AI tech on top of it, it mm -hmm. could take away that, that manual and, and, and then allow that space for that practitioner to get after the real problems like how are we going to embed sustainability? Right. How are we going to be um, stronger partners and, and develop those alliances um, to create this uh, supply chain ecosystem that we need to get after that energy transition. So I do think there's there's a lot of cases. We're specifically looking at two areas of focus within AI. So one is around, um, you know, we have a customer help desk as an example, and there's lots of information that comes through. We think AI will definitely help us, and I think there's some um, yeah. some alliances there with what could be done within procurement as well. Again, that transactional manual activity that happens on a mm -hmm. reoccurring basis. You could use AI today and really support. And then I think on um, further wavelength is what we would call um, you know, being a bit more proactive or what action should I take next? So using all the data yes. that we have our, at our fingertips, but just really don't have the platform to really digest that in a way. Um, but we think AI over time will really help with being a, a lot more proactive, helping um, tackle the risks that we see in our various supply chains and really yeah. you know, deliver that value for the business. So mm -hmm. I think endless opportunities for AI. Well, I love that you said customer feedback because how do you sift through all that data to really understand what it is that they need for each part of the organization to work towards a better customer experience. Exactly. And I've always said that collaboration. Customer centricity is so important. Yeah, it has to be part of that. All right, Louise, thank you so much. You've thank given you. us so many things to think about and take from this conversation.